In this video I'm going to show you how to do an invisible bind off for 2 by 2 ribbing, knit 2, purl 2 ribbing. I'm going to show you three different methods. All three of these are considered an invisible bind off. This one is considered a tubular bind off. Tubular is a subset of invisible bind offs because it has the double knitting rows and it actually creates a tube you can see it. you could actually run a piece of elastic or something through there that's why it's called tubular bind off these are finished in the same method as the tubular but they are not tubular they are just invisible you could also call them Italian bind off uh, Kitchener graft on one needle um, different names for them so we're going to start with this one. I'm going to demonstrate how to work this, and then this, and then this. Along the bottom of the video, I've broken this into chapters. So we'll have the introduction, which is this section. The next chapter, you'll see these little lines across the bottom of the video. The next one is this method. Then the third one is this method. The fourth one is this method. All three of these are absolutely lovely, stunning. Let me look at show you up close. The stitches just look like they curl over the edge. Same here. I made a little mistake right there. Ignore the boo-boo. And this one. So here you go. I'm going to show you how to do these. In this sample, I'm going to change the position of the stitches from knit to purl to to knit one, purl one before I bind off. I'm going to use a needle size two sizes smaller than this one. You may have to experiment yourself and see uh, whether you need to go down one needle size or two, but I'm going down two needle sizes. And I'm going to work the last row of the ribbing and at the same time transpose the stitches from knit two, purl two to knit one, purl one. So I'm going to knit the first stitch now I want a purl stitch, but I have a knit, so I need to get this purl stitch here and remove the knit, put it back on, put the purl stitch on, and purl it. Now we have the following knit, purl, knit, so we can work those. Knit, purl, knit. And if I bring my yarn forward before I transpose, I'll be in the perfect position to work the purl. Now we have a second knit followed by two purls. So we need to bring this purl to the head of the line. I just put my needle into the back of it, pull the first stitch off, put it back on, then I'm ready to purl this stitch. Knit, Purl, knit. Again, I'm going to transpose the purl to the head of the line. So you only have to move one out of every four stitches in order to get them in the proper sequence for knit one, purl one ribbing. If you're doing this, um, in the round or flat, it doesn't matter, you do it in the last row of your ribbing. And I can't emphasize enough to go down one or two needle sizes. I'm going down two needle sizes. It makes a big difference. All right. We're at the end of the row. So now we have it in the sequence of knit one, purl one. I'm going to turn my work. And I've cut my tail. I want it to be about four times the length, the width of this, plus some extra. And I'm going to thread the tail onto my tapestry needle. And now we're going to do the bind off. And this is called an Italian bind off. Some people call it Kitchener grafting on one needle or a Kitchener bind off. It is an invisible bind off. 
So we're going to do a setup, and that means we're going to go through the first knit stitch as if to purl and put our pull the tapestry needle all the way through. Then we're going to take the yarn to the back. Let me enlarge this. We're going to come between the knit and the purl and go through the front leg of the purl knitwise and take the tapestry needle through to the back. That's the setup. Now this is the sequence. It's a two-step sequence. You're going to go through the first knit. This is a knit. You're going to go through this as if to knit and slide it off. You go to the next knit, which is the second stitch here, and go through it as if to purl and pull the yarn through. And snug it up a little bit. Now the first stitch here presenting itself is a purl. We can see purl, knit, purl, knit. So you're going to go through the purl stitch as if to purl and slide it off. Then you're going to come up between that knit and purl, grab the next purl through the front leg and take your needle to the back. Snug it up. Now the first stitch presenting is a knit. We're going to go through it as if to knit and take it off. The next stitch that's a knit is right here. We're going to go through that purlwise and pull the yarn through. Snug it up. You don't want it too tight, but you want it snug. It's already looking very good. Now the next stitch is a purl. Might be hard to tell, but we can see a purl here, and we know it's knit. Uh, knit purl knit purl so this is a knit so it's a purl that's a purl we go through this purl as if to purl go behind the knit come up between the two stitches go through the first leg of that purl to the back and pull the tapestry needle through now we have a knit so we go take it off knit wise Go through the next knit purlwise. This is the same mantra that you say when you're doing a Kitchener graft, like on a sock toe. So here you would purl off, knit on, knit off, purl on. So you always work a knit with a knit and a purl with a purl. So you have to skip the stitch in between. So here's a purl, there's a knit, there's another purl. So you always skip the stitch in between. The method I'm going to show you right after this is this produces the exact same results only you do not have to transpose your stitches into knit one purl one first. Now we have, this is a knit, because we see there's a purl followed by a knit, so we go knit off, purl on. I'm going to do a couple more, then we'll skip to the end and show you how to finish it. So you don't have to watch all the way across. Now I've worked it until I have two stitches remaining and that's a knit followed by a purl. I'm going to go through the knit as if to knit and the purl as if to purl. And that is the end. So let's see how this looks. It's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Has a lot of stretch. Because we went down the needle sizes, this is, it retains its shape. If you had used the same needle size, here's a sample using the same needle size and not going down needle size, it gets out of shape and it looks sloppy.
That's using the same needle size to, as doing the ribbing. This is going down two needle sizes. You can see both sides. Looks very nice. So I want to show you the second method for doing the exact same thing now. So here is the second example of how to do the invisible bind off on knit two purl two ribbing. I have my knit two purl two ribbing here. I have not changed the order of the stitches and I did work the last row on the smaller needle. So we're all set to go. In this case we're not going to change the order of the needles, the stitches. We're going to leave them in the knit two purl two position and we're still going to work our Kitchener graft or Italian bind off in the same way in that we're going to work a knit with a knit and a purl with a purl. For example, in the previous uh, sample, I worked with a take the knit off, go through the next stitch purl wise, then go through the purl purl wise, take the and take it off, then go through the next purl knit wise. We're going to continue doing that. They're just going to be in this order instead, which requires that we make a couple of changes. But you'll see it makes sense as we do it. We're still going to do the setup, so we're going to go through the first knit purl wise and we're going to go behind the first two knits and come up between the knit and the purl with the tapestry needle and go through the first purl as if to knit taking the needle to the back. Now we're, we have our setup complete. So we're going to go through the first knit as if to knit, take it off the needle, go through the second knit, knit as if to purl, and pull the yarn through. And snug it up. Then we're going to skip over to these two purl stitches. We're going to work with them next, leaving the knit on the needle. The going behind the knit stitch, we're going to go through the first purl, purlwise, and we're going to snug up the yarn. Then we're going to go through the second purl as if to knit and take the yarn to the back. So this purl has now been worked twice. This stitch has been worked once, once, zero. Each stitch needs to be worked twice before you can take it off the needle. So now we have a knit, purl, purl, knit. We go through the first knit as if to knit, take it off the needle with the tapestry needle, go through the second knit as if to purl, skipping across the two purl stitches. This seems complicated, but once you get the hang of it, it's no more complicated than the uh, sample I showed you already. Now this purl has already been worked twice, so we can also slide it off the needle. We're going to tug this up. Now we have, we're presented with a purl stitch, then two knits, and another purl. So we're going to go through this purl, purl wise, and slide it off. We're going to go behind the two knits and go through the second purl as if to knit and pull the tapestry needle all the way through. Tug it up. Now we have two knits. We're going to go through the first knit, knit wise, the second knit purl wise. So we have a knit and two purls now. Same situation we had before. So we're going to go through the first purl purl wise from the back to the front. Then we're going to go through the second purl knit wise from front to back. This purl stitch has now been worked twice. So once we work this stitch, it'll come off also. So this we're going to go through this as if to knit. The next knit as if to purl. A 
let the pearl slide off, tug it up. Now we have a pearl, two knits, and another pearl. So we're going to go through the first pearl as if to pearl, the second one way over here as if to knit, Now we have two knits, so we go with the first one as if to knit, the second as if to purl. You have a knit, then two purls. This purl's been worked once, so it'll come off in a minute. So we're going to go through it as if to purl. Go through the second purl as if to knit. This pearl has been worked twice, so it's done. We'll go through this knit as if to knit, second knit as if to purl. Snug it up and drop the pearl off. Now we have a pearl followed by two knits and another pearl. So we go through the first pearl as if to purl. The second pearl way over here as if to knit. Then we have a knit followed by another knit. So knit off, purl on. Same mantra you use for Kitchener graft. A knit, two purls. So this is where we work with the purls. We go through the purl knitwise. First one, second one. I went with the purl wise. We go through the second one knitwise. Now we're going to go through this knit, knitwise. Go to the second knit. Go through it purl wise. And we're going to drop that pearl off because it's been worked twice. Now we have the pearl, two knits and another pearl. Oops. Then we have the knit followed by two pearls. So we're going to go through the knit, and this pearl's been worked twice, so we're going to go through this as if to knit. We're going to go through the second pearl as if to purl. And actually, we're going to go through it as if to knit and pull the whole thing off. And here we have. Invisible bind off for 2x2 two two ribbing. Now let's compare this to the one we did before. Looks very similar. This has a little bit more of a lean to it, but I think you can correct that by manipulating the stitches. Somewhat. So it does have a lean. Yeah, just by pulling up on the, you go under both legs of the stitch, like this, and pull up on it. It straightens it up somewhat. So there you have this one. We chain now. You can also see. Let me get this. This one's narrower. Do you see that? These are the same number of stitches. They both have 20 stitches. So because we transpose the stitches here, it spread that out a little bit. This one is not spread out. They both have the same amount of stretch, but because the two knits are kept next to each other, 
and it looks good on the other side, the two pearls. This actually looks really, really good. I think the secret to it is going down a needle size in the last row. So this is the one where we did not change the position of the stitches. This is the one where we change the position of the stitches. Next one up is going to be showing you how to do this with a tubular uh, fashion. So hold on, it'll be up next. Now I'm going to talk about a third method, and this is the tubular mind off for 2x2 two two ribbing, knit 2, purl 2 ribbing. I've already transposed the stitches, which you have to do, so I've changed them from knit 2, purl 2 to knit 1, purl 1, all across, just like we did for the first sample, and I have it on the smaller needle. I'm going to now work four passes, which is equal to two rows, of double knitting, which creates the tube. This is why it's called a tubular bind off. So I'm going to knit the first stitch, bring the yarn to the front, slip the second stitch. So I I'm only working the knit stitches at this time. It is important that you go down in needle size, otherwise this will look big and sloppy. So this is uh, just like you would do double knitting in one color. That's one pass. It's equal to half a row. Just the knit stitches have been worked. Then you turn the work, turn the work, do the same thing. So we're going to knit the knits. These were what were the pearls on the other side. Bring the yarn forward, slip the pearls, knit the knits. So when we finish this pass, we will have added one row of knitting. It adds the same length as one row of knitting. We're going to do this two more times, two more passes, so that we have two additional rows of knitting on our work before we start the bind off. Okay, so at this point we have worked four passes of double knitting, which is equivalent to two rows, on top of the knit two purl two ribbing. Now I'm going to do the bind off just like we did on the other swatches. It's the same bind off. I cut my tail. Put it on a tapestry needle. So we're going to do the same thing we did before exactly the same as we did when we had the stitches in the order of knit one, purl one, knit one, purl one. Go through purl wise, pull the needle through, go through knit wise on the next purl, that's the setup. Then we go through the knit as if to knit and take it off. Go through the next knit purl wise then we go through the purl, purl wise, take it off, go through the next purl as if to knit. Go through the knit as if to knit, take it off, go through the next knit, purl wise. Take the purl off, go through the next purl knit wise. Of the three, I think this is the most lovely. Go through the knit as if to knit. Next knit purl wise. Go through the purl as if to purl. Next purl knit wise. Go 
go through this knit as if to knit off, purl on, purl off, knit on, knit off, purl on. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Absolutely stunning. My very favorite. Let's see, this is a purl off, knit on, This is much more durable and sturdy than just the uh, invisible bind off that we've done on the other two swatches. The tubular knitting actually has more oomph to it and uh, regains its shape after being stretched much better than either of the other two methods that I showed you. This is really nice for the neck of a garment, uh, cuffs, the brim of a hat, if you're doing a top-down hat. And we're coming to the end. Sometimes I start daydreaming when I'm knitting and I go, what did I just do? But I think it looks right. And then we go through the last one to knit-wise and purl-wise and pull it through. Now, you can see where the tube is. It's right through here. That is actually, you could open it at the end if it were two colors. And you can see why you need to go down two, I went down two needle sizes, because if I had done it on the same size needle, this would be very large. Once it's blocked, that smooths out, but you can see it rolls over perfectly. It has wonderful stretch. It goes back in shape exactly. So let's compare all three of these now. So this is the tubular. This one was the uh, where we bound off without changing the stitch positions. Let's see, it ended over here. It's this side's the right side. And this is the one where we transpose the stitches first. Mm, I think I have them reversed. Here we go. Well, it's hard to say, isn't it? So this is tubular, and a lot of people confuse these. They'll call these tubular because the very last step is the same as the last step on the tubular knitting. Neither one of these are tubular. They're actually called an invisible bind-off, Italian bind-off. Uh, you could call it a sewn bind-off, but it's not the traditional sewn bind-off. But they're all lovely. They make this beautiful rolled edge. They all make the rolled edge that looks stunning. If you enjoy my videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Share my videos with your friends. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button and then also hit the little bell so you turn it on so it looks like it had vibration marks. Remember, I've divided this video into chapters, so down at the along the bottom of the video you'll see some lines. You can skip right to the chapter that you want. So the first chapter is introduction, the second will be working this swatch, the third is working this swatch, and the last one is working this swatch. So come back and watch some more, and happy knitting!